Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be actually taking the variables and using them in our anim blueprint. Uh, so this right here is the animation blueprint. Um, I just opened that up. If you don't know where it is, go to your, um, I guess, to your main project directory. Uh, for me, it's in animations, and then you'll see this one appear: third person anim BP. Just double click on that, and you should see this. Um, this is the event graph of the animation blueprint. So let's get started. Uh, first thing we need to do is grab this over here, this try, try get pawn owner, and we're going to cast to our actual character. So um, cast to our third person character, and we're going to attach all of our stuff at the end of this because everything else is used for blending and our what we have for our current animations. So I don't necessarily want to interfere with that. So I let's just put it at the end. Um, okay, so we need to get a couple things first. We need to get our left and right knee sockets because that's going to be kind of important for the next steps. So um, just type in get mesh so that we can get the mesh of the character. And now we need to get the socket locations, the right knee socket, and the left knee socket. Left knee socket. Okay. And we need to take those and set them to our left and right knees. So uh, from this top one here, we need to set the right knee to our right knee socket, set the left knee to our left knee socket, um, and then we also need to create another variable that I forgot about um, called the old hip offset, offset, and the only reason is because <clears throat> we can use the hip offset as is. However, it was going to be very jittery. If we interpolate between the two, then um, it'll create a much smoother type of line. So just um, duplicate this one and just—I could just call it old hip offset. Okay. Um, so we need to set the old hip offset. And what are we setting it to? To the interpolated value of a couple things. So f interp2. The current is the old hip offset. The target is going to be our hip offset. And our delta time is going to be the world's delta time. Um, so get world delta in seconds. And the interp speed I have set to 20. You can play around this number. Um, this is simply how fast it will interpolate between the two. Too low and it'll, it'll be smoother, but not fast enough to actually deform to the floor. So it'll look a little bit unnatural. Um, so you can set that to the old hip offset when you're done. And we also need to make a vector. And set this to our Z axis because Z just goes for up and down. We don't have to worry about left to right or anything like that. And then finally, um, we need to create one more variable, and this is going to be a vector, and called it, and I called it uh, the hip target offset. So drag that in here, we're setting that uh, vector to this z-axis that we have here. And this, this final one here, is what we'll be using to actually um, deal with the IK. So we're done with this section here. Now let's go into our anim graph and change this part here. Um, so what we need to do is 
turn this from local to component. So local to component, connect that. First thing we need to do is transform our, uh, it's called transform or modify bone, which is this one here. Um, the translation that we're using is going to be this uh, hip target offset that we calculated the z-axis for. The rotation and scale we keep the same and the alpha we just leave it as one uh, because that alpha is is fine. Um, but also in the properties tab if you click on the on the um, on this node you'll see over here a bunch of properties that we must set in order for this to work. Um, because we want the entire character to go down, we're going to the very base of our hierarchy. In this case, it's the root. Um, we're also going to, in the translation mode, we're going to be adding to the existing one so that it um, that essentially it will go negative and add to wherever the current location is. The translation space is going to be in world space since all of our calculations were done in comparison to the world. Parts down here are not affected. We didn't do anything with rotation, nothing with scale, and nothing necessarily for the alpha. So we're done with that part. Now to actually set up our um, two IK systems because this one was for the hip so we have the hip set up now our IKs type in two bone IK the effector location is going to let's do the right side first so the right effector location the joint target is going to be the right knee And the alpha is going to be what we set up for our IK alphas. All right, so that's one side. Um, over here, we also need to set up a couple things. So we want our IK bone to be the foot, the right foot. Um, don't set stretch limits. The effector location space is once again in world space. Make sure that, that is set to world space. Very important. The joint target location space is also going to be in world space and everything else will remain the same because it's nothing else gets really affected by it. Okay, so we have that. Now we need to do our second two bone IK and this time it's the left side. So the left vector, our left knee, and our left alpha. Okay, so now we have that, and once again, set this, or set the IK bone to our left foot. Um, there it is, okay, so our left foot. Um, and set these two parts to world space since that's what we're affecting. Now to translate this back we need to take it from um, from component to local so that we push it back to where it, how it was before and we connect. And with that guys we have our IK system. So let's go ahead and compile make sure everything is right um, and let's test this out. Uh, all right. So our, we'll see our, our character is moving pretty nicely. Okay, animation's not really affected that much. Moment of truth. Okay, let's uh, take out those, uh, those trace lines because they're a little bit annoying. Instead of for duration, just set that to none. That should be able to take care of the trace lines. 
Okay, and as you can see, the uh, the foot is not quite set up properly, but you can tell that our IKs are most definitely working. Um, let's run up here and check this part over here. And there you go. Even though the knee looks a little bit funky. Once again, this is not a perfect IK system. Um, there is a couple things that uh, you can do, at least some trigonometry to get the knees to not do that. Um, but overall, that is how you set up an IK system. If you want your feet to not clip through the floor, um, the value over here you can set to make it higher. Um, go to your uh, character blueprint, and go to the event graph, and that's what this is for over here. It's to actually bump it higher. So it looks like for this character we need to adjust it a tad. Um, perhaps 13. Let's go ahead and just try that out and see if it works. Okay, so it's a little bit better in terms of the foot, but yeah, um, just go ahead and mess around with the with some of the different variables. Uh, eventually you'll have one that you'll like and that works pretty well with your character. But that is how you do the IK system. Now currently, at least the, mo the way that we have this thing set up right now, is working specifically with our, um, with our character and not really with any other, um, like if we had enemy characters and so on and so forth. That's using different models. In the next video, I'll be going over another little principles um, way so that you can get the IK system to work with every character that you have in your game. Um, it's using something called inheritance, and I'll go ahead and explain that in the next video. Thanks for watching.